As we all know, evolution is the change in heritable traits within a population over an extended period of time. What people tend to know less about, however, is just how quickly a population can change when the overall size of the population decreases very suddenly. Today we have with us experts Felix Chaladier and Louisa Hausklicht to tell us about the bottleneck effect and the founder effect. Population bottlenecks occur when a population size is reduced for at least one generation. Since genetic drifts act more quickly to reduce genetic variation in small populations, experiencing such a sharp decrease in the population size can reduce a population's genetic variation by a lot, even if the bottleneck doesn't last for very many generations. A great example of the bottleneck effect is the story of the northern elephant seals. They normally live along the coast of California and western Mexico. In um, the late 18th century, humans began hunting the seals for their oil, um, since you could get up to 210 gallons of oil from the blubber of the largest seals. By the end of the 19th century, there were as few as 20 individuals, and by 1884, many people thought they were extinct. In 1892, eight seals were discovered um, on Guadalupe Island by the Smithsonian Expedition. The elephant seals did somehow manage to survive, mainly because there were also undiscovered seals, clearly. Um, but anyway, there was a very small population. They managed to basically grow again up to over 100,000 individuals. Thanks in part to the efforts by the Mexican government to protect the seals by law. Starting in 1922, they started passing laws um, along with the US passing the Marine Mammal Protection Act of 1972. So now there are over 100,000 individuals, um, but the genetic bottlenecks, or sorry, the genetic bottleneck exists in the population still. So because of the bottleneck, the species is now more susceptible to disease and pollution than it would have been otherwise. Reduced genetic variation means that the population may not be able to adapt to new selection pressures, such as climate change, shift in available resources, anything like that, um, since the genetic variation that selection would act on may have already drifted out of the population because of the smaller gene pool. Now that we've found out about the bottleneck effect, let's hear the story of the Pingelopes in order to learn about the founder effect. In 1975, Typhoon Lengiecki swept through Pingalap, an island that's part of the Eastern Caroline Islands in Micronesia. There were only 20 survivors. Of these survivors, one of them was the ruler of the island, Nanwarki Said, and he was identified as the carrier of a chromatopsia, which is a condition that causes total colorblindness. This condition is an autosomal recessive disorder, and this is why uh, the disorder didn't appear until the fourth generation after the typhoon, uh, by which time 2.7% of the Pingalapes were affected. Because this is an autosomal recessive disorder, if it is paired with the dominant allele, it will not express itself in the individual. Uh, inbreeding between the descendants of Nomorki Momini said resulted in an increased recessive allele frequency, and this is why there is um, such a high rate of expression of this condition in this population. Uh, by the sixth generation, the frequency of this condition uh, had risen up to 4.92% due to the founder effect in inbreeding. Uh, so the founder effect in general refers to the loss of genetic variation, uh, which results when a population starts from a small number of individuals. In this case, it was caused by the typhoon. Um, all acromats can trace their, uh, their heritage back to Monani said, and this is why the small gene pool um, and rapid population growth uh, led to such a high frequency of this disorder in this population. Uh, by now, almost 10% of the population has the disorder, and 30% are carriers. Mm -hmm. So because this disorder is recessive, individuals who are heterozygous for the gene don't express the condition but are still carriers. Uh, just for a reference, in the United States, only 0.003% are affected. Um, so there are two types of um, chromatopsia. The, uh, the, the, form, the most common form is rod monochromatism, um, which accounts for 50% of achromats, and that's the uh, type of uh, achromatopsia found on the island. This type of achromatopsia is found on chromosome 8, and uh, specifically, on, it's, it's identified as the CNGB3 gene. Um, this gene in particular is normally found in the Irish, and that is why it's believed that an Irish sailor on a British ship originally brought a chromatopsia to the island. Um, specifically, rod monochromats, which is the condition on the island, um, usually have more vision loss, more color vision loss, and greater light sensitiv uh, sensitivity. Um, they can be complete with no color vision or incomplete with traces of color vision. 
Now this image uh, shows the four most common chromosomes that, um, that can have a mutation that will cause a chromatopsia. So that's um, one, two, eight, and 10. The next image shows the frequency of each gene that and the location of each gene um, that causes the incidence of a chromatopsia. The most common is um, on the GNB3 gene. So here we can see the location exactly where on chromosome 8 of, of CNGB3 um, that causes the rod uh, monochromatism. So chromosome 8 contains about 146 million DNA building blocks. And so CNGB3 stands for the cyclic nu nucleotide gated channel beta 3. And it's located um, on the long arm of chromosome 8. Uh, its cytogenic location is 8Q21 to Q22. So this genetic form is also responsible for the cases of rod monochromatism on the island of the Pingolapis. As you can see, both the bottleneck effect and the founder effect result from a sudden decrease in the population's size, but they tend to have different effects on the following generations. Thank you for going on this wonderful journey with me from start to finish, and have a fantastic, fantabulous day, or even the rest of your life.